I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. Today we're actually not creating a shader. We're creating masks that can be used in the Luma mask shaders we learned about in the last couple of videos. If you're an artist this might be really simple anyways and you'd probably want to skip this video. But if you're a coder and not really used to image manipulation programs then this might be for you. In this video we're going to create all these masks shown here. We'll start with some easy ones to learn some tools and principles and then end with some more complex masks. To create a good mask we should follow a few guidelines. There should be white and there should be black. If not the animation wouldn't start at time 0 or would end before reaching time 1. There shouldn't be large unicolored areas because they would suddenly pop in or out and they cannot produce a rim. All values should be represented in the mask unless you want some kind of short break in the animation. And finally, all values should be represented equally unless you want the animation speed to change. Those are just guidelines and of course you can disregard them to create some specific effects if you want to. But let's get started with creating some simple masks we've seen in the previous Luma mask tutorials already. First is cloud, which is simple really and a good example on how we apply these guidelines when creating a mask. In GIMP I created a new file of 256 by 256 pixels. You might even go smaller than that since I feel masks don't really need to be large and you can still interpolate the mask sampler if needed. To create a cloud, open filters, render, clouds, difference clouds. Now I don't want too much detail in this mask or when used as Luma mask it might look too nervous and not too little detail or the result would look too smooth. For a fiery effect I found these settings to work quite well with a 256 by 256 sprite. Don't check turbulent. Set the level of detail to 4 and the X and Y size to 4. Of course with other sprite sizes you'd need to find other settings. So this got us a cloud, but if we'd leave it at that the shader would dissolve everywhere at the same time really. In example I want it to dissolve at the center before anywhere else. So let's create a new layer on top of this one and apply a radial gradient with black in the center and white on the outside. I'll set the layer blend mode to multiply and its opacity to 75%. But I also want the corners to start to dissolve at different times. So I'll just add another layer and fill it with a bilinear diagonal gradient. This layer should be in blend mode multiply as well and its opacity set to maybe 45%. This looks kind of promising already. We can easily see that the center and the area around the bilinear gradient are darkened. Now we need to polish a few things. We first need to create a new layer from all visible layers and then have a look at the histogram. If you don't know what a histogram is, it shows the distribution of values over the whole layer or image. On the left are the darks, on the right are the lights. This histogram here means we got lots of middle tones but no black and no white. To fix that we can go to the colors menu and adjust the levels. Here we can see another small histogram and three small levers just beneath that. With those we can set the black point, the white point and the middle point and moving them shows the change in the large histogram tab as well. So let's move the black and white point to the edge of the histogram and check what the large histogram shows us. We can see that now the histogram is stretched from black to white as it should be, meaning now the animation will start and end at the time 0 and 1. But I don't like how the values are distributed. The darks are more represented which means the animation would start fast and end slow or the other way around. So we'll need to even out those values a bit more. We can do that in the adjust levels tab as well by shifting the middle point. And we can also see that this procedure tore lots of gaps into the histogram. Which means we're not using all values anymore and that could cause some stuttering in our animation and hard edges. We can easily fix this though. We can just apply a tiny blur to get those values back in. So under filters, blur, Gaussian blur, I'll just apply a tiny size 1 blur. And now we can see the gaps are not completely but nearly filled again. So now I'll just export this mask and show what it looks like in all three Luma mask shaders we created. To the left is the basic Luma mask shader. Size is set to 0 0.05 only. I think this would look great anyway. In the middle is the colored rim shader with a size of 0 0.5 which is a bit nervous but depending on art style and what you're dissolving it could look cool. 
and on the right side is the colored ramp shader with a size of 0.75 and an inverted mask, which just looks cool no matter what, as long as there's some noise in the mask. But on to the next mask, the blobs mask. First we want a black background. Then some white dots of different sizes. I'll use the brush tool of different hardnesses for this. Rather high hardness for small dots and low hardness for large dots because I want to avoid getting large white areas. Also I set the opacity to 50% so I can click once for grey and multiple times to make the dots brighter. Now too many small blobs could look too nervous and too few blobs might look boring. Try to find something that looks good for your game art style. Also we need to make sure there's not too much black and too much white. Some even distribution of both would be great. We can't fix everything when polishing after all. To keep an eye on distribution, I'll always check the histogram. And this looks about okay. Now I'm going to blur this with a large radius of 35 to melt those blobs together. But this also destroys our dynamic range. We'll now need to adjust the levels to get the whites in. And with adjusting the levels, we again got all the gaps we can now remove with a small 2 pixel radius blur. This looks quite good now, so I'm going to export this and check the results in my test project. The basic shader with a size 0 looks pretty cool again and so does the two colored rim with a size 0.5, but I don't like the ramp shader with this mask. It really could use some noise. On to the next mask, gradient bars. We'll need a grid for this. Since I want 8 bars I'm going to set up a grid of 1 eighth of the canvas size. Then I'll display the grid and let the tools snap to the grid and canvas sides. Next we need to create a new layer for one bar. Layer width is the canvas width and layer height is one eighth of the canvas height. And I'm going to fill this with a grey color. Fill so I can move the layer easier and grey so I can still see the grid. And then I duplicate this layer seven times and distribute the new layers on the grid. Now we'll need the gradient tool to fill those layers. For each layer I pick a dark but not black foreground color and a bright but not white background color. The foreground color will determine when this bar starts to disappear, the background color will set when the bar is gone and the bandwidth of values will determine how quickly a bar disappears. I want different speeds so I'm going to vary the bandwidth and I want the top bar to disappear first and the bottom bar last so I'll make sure the top starts darkest and the bottom starts brightest. Also I want the gradient not to be vertical and I want the gradient on all bars to have the same angle, so I'll use the grid and drag the gradient 8 grid segments to the right and 2 segments down. Now with all gradients set, we'll need to create a new layer from visible to polish this. First again, the level adjustment. I need to make sure there are some really dark colors but hardly any black and some really bright colors but hardly any white left. And now to fix the gaps I'll apply a small Gaussian blur again but only horizontal because I don't want the bars to mix. Imported into our test project this is what the masks will look like. Looks great in the basic shader at size 0 and up to size about 0.2 but looks weird on the other two shaders. And swapping the inversion at the end of the animation looks kind of cool as well so the fade in and fade out direction are the same. Next is this pattern here created with a leaf brush. I'll start with a black canvas and five empty layers. The foreground color is white. To set up the brush I'll pick the vegetation brush which I think is a GIMP standard brush and brush size is 300. Now I'll need to create a new dynamic and link the brush angle with the random setting so the brush rotates randomly. Then I'll just paint each layer with one horizontal stroke and all layers overlapping a bit. Next I'll set the lowest layer's opacity to 20% and add 20% for each layer above the last, so 40, 60, 80 and 100. Now we got some kind of gradient. Time to polish. First we'll need a new from visible layer. I'll blur that by 20 pixels and move the layer behind all painted layers and set its opacity to about 30. Then we'll need another new from visible layer to adjust the levels. And to close the value gaps, I'll apply a small 2 pixel radius Gaussian blur. 
done already and this is what it looks like in action. I particularly like the basic shader in Vooted with a size of 0.25, but the other two kind of look cool as well. Next is this Strokes mask. I'll start with a black canvas and four empty layers. The foreground color is black and the background color is white. And as brush you can pick anything with multiple dots. I picked A2 Sparkle 3, but I'm not sure if it came with GIMP or was downloaded. I set the brush size to 100 and I'll create a new dynamic again, linking color to fade. Then I set the fade length to 400 and turn on smooth stroke with a weight of 300. Now we can paint each layer from left to right or right to left with a slightly curved stroke. Next I use the curves tool to push each layer into a separate bandwidth of values and I make sure the values of the layers don't overlap. I think it looks best with the top layer being the brightest. Now some polishing again, first I want to fill some gaps within the strokes, so I'll create a new from visible, blur it by 20 pixels and move it down just above the background layer. Then I'll adjust the levels and fix the gaps with a small blur again. And this is what it looks like. I really like all three shader versions with this mask. On to the last mask. We're going to create this multi-layered mask now. I already imported several layers. Three layers are just the first three masks we created in this video, the bars, the blobs and the cloud. We're not going to use them all at once, I'm just creating three slightly different Luma masks. Then I added this logo image and this dial image. First step is removing the anti-aliasing from the dial and the logo and fixing some ugly pixels afterwards. We can use the threshold tool to push all greys from anti-aliasing to black or white. I used the middle point to find a good setting with as little ugly pixels as possible. And then on the dial, I'm going to fix the few remaining pixels I don't like. After that, we can add alpha layers to the dial and logo by converting the grayscale of the layer so only the whites will show. Don't forget to click the main layers again after applying the mask layer, or you'll paint on the mask layer instead. Then on the logo, I'll apply a simple black to white gradient. And on the dial, I'll paint each segment in increasing values from 0 to 100. Now again, I'll push the values of each layer into a smaller bandwidth by using the curves tool. The cloud, blobs and bars should be rather bright and get a quite large bandwidth, a bit less than the upper half. The logo gets a rather small bandwidth in the center. And the dial gets a rather large bandwidth covering nearly half of the bottom. Now I can export this three times, always the dial and logo, but every time with a different background. And that's what it looks like in our shaders. More than three layers get a bit problematic though. One reason being that we only got 255 values, although you could adapt the shader code to use all three color channels, and the other reason being time. You don't want the transition to take too much time, really. Anyways, I hope this helps you creating some interesting Luma masks without struggling as much as I was at first. Until next time.